radio-friendly viewers, and welcome to Planet Earth, Our Loving Home. On this edition of our program, we speak with renowned Australian climate scientist David Caroli. David Caroli is professor of meteorology in the School of Earth Sciences at the University of Melbourne, Australia, and an Australian Research Council Federation Fellow specializing in the fields of greenhouse climate change, ozone depletion, and climate variations associated with the El Nino Southern Oscillation. An internationally recognized expert on global warming, he is a member of the United Nations Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change, a coordinating lead author for the panel's 2001 Third Assessment Report, and a lead author for the panel's 2007 Fourth Assessment Report, as well as a review editor. Today, Professor Caroli discusses the devastating effects of climate change on Australia and the rest of the planet. The summers of 2007, 2008 and 2009 had less sea ice in the Arctic than any other year. We've also seen increases in melting of the ice sheet in Greenland. So what we've seen is increases in melting and the retreat of the glaciers so that the ice is moving faster down to the water. Mm. And what that means potentially is a destabilization of the Greenland ice sheet and more rapid melting of ice which will contribute to faster sea level rise. Mm. We're also seeing at high latitudes in the northern hemisphere on land melting of permafrost, areas that, close to the surface of the ground that are permanently frozen, that don't actually melt in summertime. And what we're finding is those areas of frozen ground are actually melting for the first time in recorded history. Mm. That's destabilizing buildings but it's also having another amplifying feedback because trapped in this frozen ground are large amounts of essentially vegetation material mm. and methane that's trapped under the ground. When it melts, it releases the methane and that also can amplify the rate of warming because methane is a very effective greenhouse gas, mm. much more effective per kilogram of methane than carbon dioxide. Mm. So releasing methane from melting permafrost is another factor that increases the rate of climate change. Global warming's dangerous impact on Australia is becoming increasingly apparent with each passing year. Here in Australia we've experienced massive reductions in rainfall in the southeast and the southwest, which is having impact on agriculture. At the same time, the country is undergoing increasingly intense and frequent heat waves. We had in winter, in August, a heat wave, not in this same area, but in a different part of Australia, in uh, Queensland and New South Wales. And then we again experienced record temperatures. Records not just for 30 years or 50 years, but records for the whole of the observational data for more than 100 years. And the remarkable thing, this is really what surprised me and many other climate scientists, mm. was that normally the hottest time of the year in most parts of the world is in summer. And summer in Australia is January and February. The interesting thing is that there were a number of cities, towns, that had their hottest day of the year in this heat wave in August, hotter than any time in January or February, the normal hottest time of the year. And so to have the hottest day of the year in the middle of winter is really unusual. It's just unheard of in many of these areas. Besides recurring heat waves, droughts are also disturbing many parts of Australia, leading to extremely destructive wildfires. The combination of the increases in temperature, the heat waves, and the reduction in rainfall has caused big problems with increased frequency and intensity of bushfires. So Victoria had its worst bushfires ever in February this year and there is a clear signal of climate change making these bushfires even worse. Mm. Nearly 170 people died in those bushfires. Mm. 
Due to global warming, Australia's national treasure, the Great Barrier Reef, the world's largest reef and home to over 1,500 species of fish and 400 species of coral, is facing unprecedented threats. The Great Barrier Reef is a massive coral reef system down the eastern coast of Australia, in the northeastern part of Australia, more than a thousand kilometers long. That's been experiencing major damage called coral bleaching, where the colors in the coral associated with the symbiotic relationship between the coral polyps and small zooxanthellae. Um, they are being affected by increasing temperatures as well as being affected by changes in the acidity of the water because of increases in dissolved carbon dioxide. So the increasing temperatures and the increasing amounts of dissolved carbon dioxide are putting extra stress on the coral reef. They're causing the corals to bleach at an increasing frequency and some of the corals are dying. When we return, Professor Caroli will discuss the environmental effects of climate change if the average global temperature rises 4 degrees Celsius. Please stay tuned to Supreme Master Television.